megalithic monuments represent the materialization of one of the most profound social and cultural transformations of Europe in the Holocene. Further to very renowned cases such as Stonehenge, approximately 35,000 dolmens, mounds and other monuments are still preserved across the Atlantic facade, testament to a number that is likely to have been much higher. The megalithic monuments constitute a shared social and funerary phenomenon throughout Atlantic Europe during the Neolithic, starting in the early 5th millennium BC and involving the construction of large-scale earth and stone structures, typically collective graves covered by a mound. For the sake of this presentation, the attention will be, pa will be put in the northwestern part of the Iberian Peninsula, where more than 1,000 mounds and megaliths are still preserved, specifically in the Council of Salas, Asturias. This presentation is part of a bigger research project funded by the Valdez Salas Foundation, named Covertorias Project, which aims to analyze the links that may have existed between some of the megalithic remains and the quarries used for building the tombs. The research is only a small part of the Covertorias project, which has a special interest in the archaeological remains dated between the Neolithic and the, to the Bronze Age for the whole Cantabrian area. Amongst other parts, since 2016, the project has been carrying out excavations in one of the most remarkable examples of burial chamber in Asturias, the Dolmen of Cobertoria. After four years digging, the information gathered allows us to include this area in the big fluid of the megalithic construction in the Cantabrian area. Thus, around 4000 BC, a first, a first uh, barrow was erected, although this will be in use during nearly five centuries. The other main goal of our project is to update the official sites and monuments records carried out during the 1990s. Thanks to, the, to these uh, preliminary works, we grouped the barrows in uh, 16 megalithic cemeteries, com comprising a number of 80 megalithic structures. During our fieldwork campaigns, we updated the information available for each necropolis, adding key information like GPS co coordinates and checking new references as from LIDA analysis of the cemeteries. The LIDA is a cutting edge technology based on airborne uh, laser scanner, which allow the archaeologists to investigate the surface of the earth by removing the vegetation. The LIDA analysis were carried out using the free data available through the National Geographical Institute, thanks to the research developed by Miguel Carrero. The application of several digital Im imaging techniques to the LIDA data allow us to informally explore the cemeteries and these results were checked with field works in order to contrast the accuracy of the results. Thanks to this new information, during the last two years the, Co the Covertoria project has been putting efforts on new lines of research. First, to use the LIDAR technology performing what is called a remote-based archaeological prospection. Second, to use the LIDAR for measuring the structure in volume and cubic meters. And third, uh, to th search for the quarries which uh, may have been linked with the barrows. As the impact uh, of the coronavirus uh, inter interrupted uh, all the fieldwork campaigns due to several lockdowns of the country and the specific council. Here we only present the most remarkable data obtained before the eruption of the global pandemic crisis. The Council of Salas is located in the midwestern part of Asturias, occupying a total area of uh, 227 square uh, kilometers, not far from the core area 
uh, 34 kilometers from Oviedo, this zone has no access to the sea, although it's, it's not far from the coastline, around 18 kilometers. In historical terms, the Council of Salas has been related to environmental and the economic influence of the coastal resources. The necropolis of San, of San Juan is located in a central area of the council, where six barrows were, are still preserved as remaining of the presence of prehistoric megalithic builders. Those uh, six structures were spread along the top part of the mountain, like barrow number, number four, as well as in key routes connecting different valleys, barrow number one. Um, even the eastern slope of the mountain was occupied, showing a clear interest on this area. What initially might seem a secondary position in the mountain turns to a very ancient site, and the best example uh, is the barrow number five called La Cobertoria. In fact, after four archaeological campaigns here, we have a clear idea of the chronology of this important site between the 4,000 the 4, and the 3,500 3, BC approximately. In the first phase, around 4,000 BC, a small structure was built previous to the dolmen. This structure is a circular stone tumulus, uh, so the stone was obviously a key material for, for creating the first tomb. You are seeing now two different reconstructions of the first phase. In both pictures, it's possible to see the remains of a stone barrow, 6 meter diameter. The empty space is the result of the, of the construction of two more megalithic structures over the first phase, as well as the result of our own diggings. The stone barrow was built over a thick lay layer with a high concentration of charcoal. This fact allowed us to sample this layer obtaining a radiocarbon date around 4000 BC a key moment for the megalithic phenomenon in the Cantabrian area. Let's move to the second phase. Around three centuries after the stone barrow, the settlers of this area radically, radically changed the form of the ritual zone. Over the old tumulus of stones, they built a ring of clay of 11 meter diameter, a totally new design that completely uh, buried the stone barrow. Based on the thermoluminescence uh, dating of some fires developed over the ring of clay and considering the stratigraphy and the radiocarbon data avail available for the phase 1, uh, 4000 BC, and phase 3, 3500 BC, our proposal is that the ring of clay was erected during 3700-3800 BC. If the hypothesis is correct, then the building of each phase will have been in use for 200 or 300 years. The third phase is also streaking, as the previous stone was again crucial as part of the tomb, being used for building the big main burial uh, chamber with uh, a two meters long corridor for the access. Uh, processes of uh, reutilization like this have been checked in several parts of Atlantic Europe, so this might be understood in terms of megalithic traditions. You are seeing now the distribution of the tumulus of the San Juan necropolis where it's possible to remark that in all cases and not far from the barrows there is a significant number of rocky outcrops. This close relationship between the natural out outcrops and the, and the megalithic uh, architectures is not so clear in the case of the second phase of La Cobertoria. The composition of the clay used du during the building uh, process of the uh, structure concludes that part of the clay was extracted far from the, that uh, final destination. 
In fact, the diffractometry analysis uh, carried out by Álvaro Rubio, a geologist from the University of Oviedo, concludes that part of the clay comes from the site of the barrow. Thus, uh, in sample 10, there is a clear composition of siliceous and clastic materials. However, other analysis, sample 7, shows high levels of magnesite, a material that, it, that is not original from the location of the barrow but appears clearly in the geological map at a distance of about 600 meters. Also, there are remarkable differences between both two points in altitudinal terms, which means that part of the clay was carried from areas close to the river, near the valley, to the almost 800 meters over the sea level where the tomb was built. The change of height can be clearly appreciated in the section of the mountain or in panoramic views of the landscape. Samples taken from two nearby pits were being analyzed too by geologists, the pit of Mina de la Arena and the pit of Gallinero. Both show with remarkable coincidences in their composition with the analysis developed in the clay ring. In order to study the relation between both, we carried out two kind of preliminary analysis that must be further considered in the following months. Firstly, a simple approach based on Euclidean distance and, in a second step, a more realistic one based on the coast of passage from Cobertoria to the pits. Both analyses are in progress now, waiting for publication as soon as possible. Although this research is not oriented to decide what outcrop could be uh, the selected one by the Neolithic populations to extract the material with which uh, to build La Cobertoria, we can conclude that Mina de la Arena is possibly the easier outcrop in terms of proximity and accessibility. These conclusions match the results of other areas as their the megalithic uh, quarries are normally located really close to the monuments, implying local labor. Having said that, let's move to a wide vision of San Juan Necropolis that allowed us to gather more data about the quarries. You are seeing now the distribution of the tumulus over a digital terrain model after applying some Rasta visualization techniques. As we mentioned pre previously, not far from the tum tumuli, there are a significant number of outcrops of the same type of rocks used of the, uh, for the barrows, uh, for example, quart quartzite. It's necessary to stress that these uh, logical links have always to be analyzed in terms of the landscape A scale. In this particular example, barrows and quarries are part of the mountains, conforming groups of natural elements in geological and topographical terms. A good example would be the summit of San Juan, crossed by a rocky outcrop along the whole mountain. The same situation can be seen in the other two slopes of San Juan, where lines of, bed of bedrock, probably used as quarries in different degrees, arise in several points of the hillsides. As a consequence, we think that the large number of rocks available possibly made uh, available different options during the construction of the tombs. However, it's also clear that prehistoric societies did not only take uh, decisions based on functional terms. Rights, super superstitions, beliefs or tradition can be key points in order to take decisions when building up a tomb. But the physical factors are, are uh, variables to take uh, into account, especially in the sense of uh, labor, the efforts and the distance to cover. Concerning the three main areas of San Juan, we will analyze each, each group uh, along the following uh, pictures and slides. The barrow number three is maybe the most significant example of close connection between human construction and a probable uh, quarry used for building it. Less than uh, 15 uh, meters of distance between a large outcrop and the megalithic tomb. 
In other cases, the links are not so clear. The builders of Barrow number 4 had several possibilities. For instance, quarries B and C and D were pointed out in the analysis as the most viable sites for taking rocks. In the first case, the reasons were the small distance between tomb and quarry, as well as the presence of huge rock uh, emerging from the soil. The site named CD, uh, Peñas de Nubleu, is the largest quarry of all the mountain and was probably always a key reference in the landscape. The rocks are dividing areas, showing relevance in the landscape not only due to the position but also to, to its uh, features. Cultural or symbolic reasons could work in this relation between the Peñas de Nubleu and the Barrow number 4 in addition to a huge amount of rocks of great quality available in that part of the mountain. The last area of interest is linked with the most significant tumulus in the necropolis, the barrow number, number 5, named La Cobertoria. Although apparently this monument is located occupying a minor position on, in the mountain, far from the summit of the hill, other reasons could explain the importance of the site for the prehistoric communities and the notable efforts developed during uh, its three prehistoric phases. Between these reasons could be the remarkable abundance of big rocks in the surroundings. In 2016, uh, we identified a clear front of a possible quarry in visible and clear connection with the barrow, and this is less than uh, 70 uh, meters away from the barrow. Both share the same type of rock, so it looks like this, uh, this is the main site uh, for quarrying due to its features and the distance. However, other secondary quarries could have been used during the several phases. Less remarkable blocks of rocks appear in the slope of the mountain, which emerge from the soil discontinuously. Moreover, during the construction of a small road and the action of the bulldozer, uh, two en enormous blocks of rock appeared uh, not far from the barrow number 5, less than a half a kilometer, called Quarry J and Quarry K. Although they are natural rocks coming from the bed, bed rock, they could be easily treated to produce uh, megalithic slabs, as you can see on the slide. Also, it's, ne it's necessary to stress the high number of lithic artifacts made for, from quartz that appeared during the excavations. Even the, sla la the slabs show the links between the quartz sites and quartz. The latter appears frequently attached to the massive quartz sites. Some findings indicate also an intensive work of the quartz. Two knives, one complete and other partially recovered, and an arrowhead. The local origin of, this, of these materials must be confirmed, however, with uh, further geological studies of these instruments. Finally, we would like to stress some preliminary results of the Corradas Necropolis, an area that will need further fieldwork to confirm our initial proposals. After the first analysis of this mountain, we identified seven barrows located on two main areas. Western and eastern sectors of that location are clearly divided, conforming two physically separated subsets. The barrows 1 to 3 are on the western part, the barrows 4 to 7 in the eastern part. Both clusters were built in small flat areas divided by geological vertex. Moreover, the dividing line is the main quarry currently identified in the mountain. The site called Peña del Moro still conserves some huge blocks of quartzite, the same type of rocks that, that frequently appears in the surroundings of the barrows 1 to 3 as it was uh, previously remarked. LIDAR technology was useful here to identify some huge trenches in the eastern part, not far from the tumuli. 
Local people of Las Corradas village remember how rock from these uh, trenches was used as quarries for building or repairing the houses of the village. In other words, we have an area with rocks and resources for building, and maybe the trenches were dug as the blocks did not easily uh, emerge in this area. Some preliminary hypotheses can be argued into other prehistoric cemeteries that are under, under consideration, Penausen and Hidarga, although these uh, first ideas must be confirmed with further field work. In Penausen, for example, the presence of massive bedrock is clearly appreciated in some sections discovered now next to the barrow. The best proof of the huge quantities available is the activity along several decades of a local mining company that is extracting the rock for making construction materials. The northern part of the necropolis, in fact, shows a great rocky outcrop that is very close to the prehistoric cemetery. This out outcrop was partially included in the recent mining activities. The features of the megalithic slabs used for building the burial chamber of the most conspicuous barrow, the number one, clearly prove the prehistoric use of local resources. The abundance of rocks is very clear in Hidarga as well, not only by the existence of rocky outcrops, but the continuous appearance of rocks in the current surface of the mountain. Today, this situation makes the, agri the agricultural la labor uh, very problematic on this area, as the soil is normally composed by, by dispersed stones which have to be removed prior to agricultural activities. The most remarkable tumulus in Hidarga is the barrow number one, which reveals the use of those resources available on the surface of the mountain. The burial chamber shows part of the underlying structure as a result of the post-medieval sacks which tried to find treasures uh, on, the on the tomb. However, the type of rocks used in the burial chamber is the same that can be found on the mountain. To sum up, the information gathered allows us to understand the wide use of local stones very close to the tumuli. A phenomenon clearly visible in Penausen, San Juan, Hidarga, or even in Las Corradas. However, there might be other possibilities which, which uh, could indicate that the decisions have to, uh, had to be more complex. For instance, during the fa uh, phase two of La Cobertoria, we documented the, mov the movement of several tons of clay from distances of more than one kilometer away. The final result was the construction of a ring of clay at this moment, where the fire burned to high temperatures, conforming balls of clay dated today by thermoluminescence. Thus, the clay and the fire are clearly connected with a remarkable architecture, a relation that is not new in the megalithic complex of European prehistory. For sure, this clay drew the attention of the communities, maybe with a ritual sense. Furthermore, the constant increase of the barrow of La Cobertoria and the growing scale of the architecture is not understandable without the evolution of the prehistoric communities that constantly evolved during the last part of the Neolithic and Incalcolithic times in Iberia. It seems reasonable that the claim was not far from the most convenient areas of the low part of the valleys that allows a more comfortable residence for these groups. Finally, it also seems true that some of the efforts for building the megalithic monuments in Asturias cannot be understandable without considering the people who is behind the rocks. All their ideas, feelings and ways of understanding their world are crucial as well as the landscape in which these monuments were living. <laughs>